Awesome. Well, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, my name is Amanda Camarada. I'm a senior in mechanical engineering. And today we'll be talking about the La Space Academy, um, which is something that I participated in in fall 2020. Um, it's a very unique experience. It is sponsored by NASA and I think looks pretty cool on a resume. Um, and then Allison, I don't know if you also wanted to introduce yourself. Sure. So I'm Allison. I'm the representative for WOA with the club. WOA is Women of Aeronautics and Astronautics. Although this presentation we have today is for everyone. Um, I'm a mechanical engineering major and I'm going into my second year, but I'm kind of taking junior year classes. So yeah. So this presentation is pretty quick, um, but there's a lot of really good information. So if you have questions at any time, feel free to stop me, um, but you can go ahead and go to the next slide. So LaSpace um, sounds kind of goofy, but it stands for the Lucy Student Pipeline Accelerator and Competency Enabler, which is why they've shortened it to LaSpace. Um, as you can see on the slide, it's free. Um, it's completely online and it's an interactive program that's open to undergraduate STEM students. That, um, I find that interesting because when I did it, we had a high school student on our team, but she was enrolled in community college. So maybe that's why she was able to participate. Um, and we also had a grad student on our team. So I can try to get more information on that, but I'm not sure it applies to anyone here. I'm pretty sure everyone here is an undergraduate student. Um, it's a hands-on learning experience. Um, what I did in my program was we were given um, kind of a mission that we wanted to build a lander for, which I can get more into soon. Um, and then throughout the process, you'll learn about NASA mission procedures and protocols directly from industry professionals. They'll stop by, um, you're required to go to a meeting once a week where those industry professionals talk about certain things um, that allow you to complete the academy. Um, and like it says, complete mission related um, team projects. And on this slide, um, there's a very short video that talks to you a little bit about what the Lucy mission is. If you're interested in aerospace at all, you probably know that the Lucy mission was just launched this past weekend, I think, um, which was pretty cool because all of the LaSpace students who completed these academies were invited to go see the launch in person. Um, so just one of the kind of cool benefits from being a part of the program, but I'll be quiet for a moment and let the, the video play. Asteroids get kind of a bad rep. We really only talk about them in the context of Extinction or Bruce Willis movies or sometimes both. But since they were likely born out of the same material as the outer planets, asteroids may hold the key to understanding the origins of our solar system. Enter NASA's Lucy mission. The first ever mission to a set of asteroids called the Trojans. The Trojans are special because unlike the main belt asteroids, these two groups sort of flank Jupiter on either side, orbiting the sun along with it. Just a side note, Lucy was named after a famous Australopithecus fossil, which is hailed as a tremendously important discovery for understanding human origins. The Lucy fossil was in turn named after Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which is, I guess, an important discovery for understanding the Beatles. But here's the craziest part. The Lucy mission is visiting seven asteroids in one go. There's Donald Johansson, small but feisty. He's actually a main belt asteroid, not a Trojan, so he's more of a test run for Lucy. Next, Eurybates, who has a super edgy collisional backstory he doesn't like talking about, but that doesn't mean we won't ask. Then Polymele, the smallest Trojan, but still bigger than Donald Johansson, followed by Lucas, who sure likes to take his time considering his day is 466 hours long. Next is Horus, who's probably shy from all the attention because his face is super red. And finally, we have this inseparable pair of best friends, sort of the Corgan Meek of the asteroid world, everyone's favorite binary pair of asteroids, Patroclus and Menetius. Using her instruments on board, Lucy will analyze the asteroid's surface geology, color, composition, masses and densities, and even check whether or not the asteroids have rings or satellites. Lucy is set to launch in October of 2021, and with that, she'll prove that studying asteroids can have a pretty deep impact on our understanding of the universe. And they got a big another asteroid movie soon because these references are getting dated. 
I don't know about y'all, but I'm a sucker for bad sci-fi movies. So, <laughs> um, anyways, here we go. I love that video. Okay, um, so there's some animations. You can click through all of them. There's five. Um, but just a general overview of the program. Um, when I participated, there were about 500 students from over 600 universities. Um, so I skipped ahead a little bit, but the environment, as they say, is family style and professional. The two um, program managers, Dan Garcia and Sherry um, Klumbunstra, um, they're both really, really awesome and really supportive. And they find a way to make those meetings of over 500 students feel very centered and connected. Um, which I thought was very nice. Um, over 2,500 STEM students have participated to date. Um, and this, these slides are actually from a year ago, so it's probably closer to 3,500, considering about 500 students participate every session um, from over 600 colleges and universities. So it'd be really cool to get more MIND students involved. Um, the program is very diverse. Um, so you'll get to interact with a lot of people, not only from different universities, but from different backgrounds. And then you get professional subject matter expert and peer mentor support. Every team has their own assigned peer mentor, usually a student who's um, completed the program from Arizona State University. Um, and you also have access to um, Dan and Sherry who oversee the program, as well as being able to connect with any of the people who present weekly and talk about all of the mission concepts and technical things um, that help you complete the program. Some other benefits from participating in the List Space Academy. Um, there are two different programs that you can apply for. One is the Mission Concept Academy, MCA, or the NASA Proposal Writing and Evaluation Experience Academy, um, which we call NPWE. Um, but if you also participate in either of these academies, you have access to some internships that are exclusive to um, with space students, and then you can also become um, an ambassador of the program, pretty much doing what I'm doing, but I never officially applied to be an ambassador. I just really enjoyed the program, um, but you, you would basically just be kind of like talking about the program and, and getting more students to be involved. Okay, so the Mission Concept Academy is what I participated in, and then Nikki, who might be joining us late, participated in both um, the Mission Concept Academy and in PWE. Um, but the goals of the Mission Concept Academy is to empower NASA's future workspace to be capable of working in teams to optimize projects. So like I said, the Academy was completely virtual and I worked with um, students from at least five or six different universities, um, ranging from a student, like I said, that was in high school to grad students. Um, but I really wanna emphasize this particular point because um, as part of what I do for, I'm also um, the vice president for AIAA, but a part of what um, I do is reach out to recruiters um, to find opportunities for students here. And I've asked them before, what they wish their interns came in with more prepared. And both of the recruiters who responded to me said teamwork and collaboration skills. And I know as mine students, we get access to that all the time, but it's always, of course, within the context of just our minds community. So I think it's a really unique opportunity to be able to kind of start practicing that those teamwork skills in different environments with different students from different backgrounds at different universities. Um, and then you'll get to learn best practices um, from maturing your design idea into a preliminary design review. And is knowing how to do a preliminary design review important? Yes, because you'll be doing it as a senior. Um, we have, a P I'm a senior, so we actually have our PDR due in a few weeks. So it's nice to have a little bit of background about what, um, what is involved in making a preliminary design review. And then of course you learn how to effectively communicate and follow through on tasks to meet your deadlines. In the era of COVID, I don't think we're ever going to get away from working virtually with teams. Um, so again, it's just continued practice 
on how to be a good teammate in kind of our new environment that is more hybrid now. We're getting, we're starting to get back to normal, but I think we'll, it'll always be at least hybrid. And pretty much anything that you do, you get out of it what you put in. And they give you a lot of tools to work with. So you have additional tools to help drive your career in different directions. Um, they also provide training on new tools such as Siemens NX. Um, we know that mine's very heavily focuses, at least in mechanical engineering, we focus heavily on SolidWorks. Um, but depending on what company you work for, what industry you work for, different um, CAD tools um, depend on where you work. So Siemens NX is something that's um, used by NASA. Um, so they train you through the academy um, on how to use Siemens NX and they prepare you. Um, they train you well enough so that at the end of the academy, you can actually get certified in Siemens NX for free, which I think is really cool. Um, they also trained us on heat transfer. And for me, that was cool um, because I'm only taking heat transfer now. And so I was able to do the thermal analysis of our lander concept before I ever took heat transfer. Um, it was pretty like basic, um, but I think it was a nice kind of introduction to heat transfer. And then of course, project man management skills and a lot of other things that you learn from working on a team. And then it also helps you, like it says, view your world more strategically. The fall and the spring academies, I think are a little more challenging because you're trying to balance it with your regular coursework. Um, so time management, of course, is really important. And you also get to work more on being a problem solver. I think unless you've had an internship at an aerospace company that specializes in spacecraft, this will probably be your first introduction to what it's like to kind of build um, a mission from the ground up and design your own solutions um, based on what kind of challenges they give you. And it vary, and it changes from year to year. So like it says at the bottom, your personal ROI will directly relate to your level of effort. You get out what you put in. There were some students on my team that didn't even finish. They kind of dropped out um, in the middle of the semester because of various reasons I can't speculate. But um, I think it's always, it always says a lot about someone's character not to say anything bad about the people that dropped out, but I think it says a lot to a recruiter when you're able to finish something that takes a lot of effort that you, how do I explain this? It's very low risk. Like it's not something you're getting a grade on, right? Like if you drop out, like the world's not going to end, like no grades are affected. You're not losing money or anything like that. And so I think especially to recruiters, it's really valuable to be like, I worked on this really challenging project when really there was nothing in it for me besides learning and working with a team. So, yeah. Um, we've all seen something like this before, but this is something they do at the beginning of the academy, what you want from it. And of course, teamwork, leadership, confidence, knowledge, opportunities, all of those things. And from my experience, you get all of those things by participating in the, um, Mission Concept Academy, as well as MPWE. Um, so as I've said before, you'll work in teams to design a mission concept that successfully accomplishes a task that you've been assigned. Um, what the tasks will look like, um, for my academy, we had to design a lander that could land on the surface of Enceladus um, and gather data. So kind of broad, um, but also has a very unique um, kind of challenge because Enceladus doesn't has, have an atmosphere. How are you going to land? Um, so as a university that doesn't have aerospace engineering, it was really interesting to think about all of those different things that we're not necessarily exposed to as mine students. So I got to think about things like propulsion, um, how much propellant do you need? And you also had mass constraints um, for how heavy your lander could be, um, how to design tanks, because I think our lander could only be either 50 or 70 kilograms, which is kind of small. Um, and there's not a lot of propellant tanks <laughs> readily available off the shelf to where you could like propel um, a lander down. And then the other challenge was like, well, we don't have an atmosphere, so you don't have to worry about going against 
atmosphere, but you have to worry about like how hard it's going to hit the ground. So you need some propellant to kind of like hover on the ground and land where you, so lots of different things that I thought were really cool that you don't really think about or get to think about as often as a mind student. So um, that's what I really enjoyed about it. And of course, time management, like I said, is important. You have to organize yourselves um, and assign tasks to each other. So you also have a team organizational structure that you'll determine with your teammates at the beginning. I was the project manager for my team as well as the mechanical engineer. Um, and then, you know, different positions come with different responsibilities. Um, I really enjoyed what I did. Um, and then, of course, you'll be working as a team outside of your regular class time, which is why I say that sometimes I think that the fall and the spring versions of the academy are a little bit more challenging because you're trying to balance something that's low risk, like I'm not getting a grade on this, with I have all these classes that I have to prioritize because I am getting a grade on this, you know, things like that. Um, I think I've said all of this before, but each week um, you'll meet with your entire the entire List Space Academy where subject matter experts come in and talk about certain things like um, how to do your preliminary design review, um, how Levinson, which I think is the principal investigator, PI, um, for the Lucy mission came in and chatted with us. So really a lot of cool NASA folks come and just talk about what they're doing and how it relates to what you're trying to accomplish excuse me, in the academy. Um, then you have the LaSpace staff, which includes Dan and Sherry, and then all of the mentors that you have access to. And then they also give you um, different milestones and dates. And I see a question in the chat, um, when are those weekly meetings? So um, they always have them, and they're also on the website, um, which we'll share with you in a second. But I think the Mission Concept Academy meets every Tuesday from usually in the evening, it's like 5.30 to 7 Mountain. And then um, NPWE, I think, meets on Thursdays at the same time. So um, I think they try to get back to you quickly on whether or not you're accepted so you can kind of um, adjust your schedule um, accordingly because those meetings are required um, for you to attend um, if, you are, if you participate. So if you can never go to the meetings, then it's just like, <laughs> what's the point? Yeah. Okay, and so NPWE, I haven't participated in this, but I know a little bit about it. Um, this, the, the process is very similar, they just have a different objective. So the difference is, is that they learn to identify needs and write concepts based on the NASA technology taxonomy, which is, I want to say like a list of things that NASA writes out that are needs that they want like other people to try and like build concepts for to meet those. Um, so the difference is with the Mission Concept Academy, they give you, they give everyone the same mission. They're like, we're going to Enceladus design a lander and every team does that. But in NPWE, you get that list of um, different needs from NASA and every team could try to tackle a different need. Um, and so you get experience in evaluating and scoring proposals from the lens of a NASA reviewer. And this is very, very similar to, I want to call it industry, but you have like different industries, different organizations, like how Lockheed Martin or Ball Aerospace write proposals to NASA to um, work on a certain spacecraft or something like that with their idea for what they think is going to be the most cost effective um, and meets that mission need. Um, and then you get to talk about how NASA reviewers actually go through that proposal. So if you end up working somewhere like Lockheed Martin and you're working on like a spacecraft proposal, if you do in PWE, now you have an idea of what they're actually looking for. Um, and you've had practice on um, actually writing those proposals. But the other big difference between Mission Concept Academy and NPWE is that you're actually competing with the other teams and that the top team gets $10,000 to actually build their concept. Um, so it really just depends on what you want to get out of it. And you can do both 
um, just not at the same time. So you can do MCA one session and then do NPW another session. That's how Nikki, um, who's the other student who, who did this, was able to do both. Um, so you could eventually do both if you wanted. Um, so you're assigned a NASA mentor, you learn how to patent your idea, and then you learn all of those like key proposal terms, NTR, KPP. I haven't done NPWE, so I actually don't know what all those mean, except SME. I know what that means, subject matter expert. And then you learn how to properly read solicitations. So um, those are the main differences between the Mission Concept Academy and NPWE. Now, what's in common is that you should prepare to commit a minimum of five hours a week um, if you want to get the most out of it. Obviously, you can do a lot less, but you should be prepared to treat this as an additional course in your schedule, especially if you're taking it in the fall um, or in the spring. And then you get to see presentations from NASA speakers every week. You're learning more teamwork skills. And of course, you get to learn more about the aerospace and space industry. And that very first point, I think, is really important to drive home. I think it's one of the reasons why we lost a few people um, when, I, when I did um, the Mission Concept Academy. Um, it just sometimes if you're not prepared for it, you don't know how to balance your coursework and the academy. And obviously, you should prioritize what you're getting a grade for. Um, but definitely keep that in mind if that's something you're interested in and you want to get the most out of it. I mentioned before that if you participate in the um, academies, you have access to internship opportunities that are exclusive to La Space students. That includes um, SWERI, which is the Southwest Research Institute, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, um, Lockheed Martin Space, Kinet X, and then Arizona State University. They have a really well-renowned aerospace engineering department with a lot of research opportunities. Um, and there are several students on my team that were able to do the internship with ASU. And current La Space students and alumni are encouraged to apply. And I underline current because um, I think the deadline for summer opportunities for these La Space internships is like March, February or March. It's on the website. I can double check. But that means if you apply and are accepted to the spring, um, either of the spring academies, that means you're eligible to apply to any of these internships. So if you're still really hurting for an internship, it's not too late. There's, there's opportunities um, if you participate in one of these academies. Um, I mentioned being an ambassador, it's just conducting outreach for the NASA Lucy mission, as well as the academies, like I said, kind of what I'm doing now. Um, but also one of those volunteer things that looks really nice on a resume. And then, um, like I said, there's the summer, fall, and spring academies. Um, the spring application deadline is December 31st, but I would encourage you, if this is something you're interested in, um, that you apply sooner rather than later because they accept people on a rolling rolling basis. And then when they hit capacity, that means they won't accept anymore. Um, so even though you could apply up until December 31st, if they meet their cap before then, then you're less likely to get accepted. So I would do it sooner rather than later. And then other ways for you to connect with La Space. Dan Garcia is one of the program mentors that I mentioned. Um, but are there any specific questions that I can answer about the program overall or the Mission Concept Academy? And if you're interested, I have our PDR from my Concept Academy pulled up. I won't, I won't show it in detail because I want to keep a little air of mystery about it. Um, but me, yeah, um, I'm planning on going into aerospace. <laughs> I hope. So far, um, I've been doing um, space science research, um, but I'm trying to get into the engineering side as well. But what I really like about this kind of work is that um, these mission concepts are a really cool blend of science and engineering, um, which is kind of what got me into the space science side. Right now, what I'm doing 
um, I'm helping um, analyze asteroid data, which is cool. And of course, the Lucy mission um, is going to be gathering more data on asteroids. And so you have to have the engineers that know how to build all the instrumentation and the payload. But of course, the scientists that know what data they need, the instrumentation they need, and then how to analyze that data when it comes back. So I think the the blend of, of space science and engineering is pretty cool when it comes to, to something like this. Is this any way similar to Rascal? Yes and no. <laughs> um, similar in the way that they give you kind of an open-ended challenge um, that you need to create a design for. Um, but I think with Rascal, because I'm, I'm on a Rascal team right now, it's just your college team. And usually I think now we're, we're back in person. Um, and then with the space, you're able to interact with a lot of people from different universities um, in a virtual environment. So maybe a little, maybe it's similar, but kind of not, I guess it just depends on, on what, what you're trying to accomplish. And I think one of the nice things about the academies versus something like Rascal is that you're really, really focused on the planning and development part of a mission concept and not yet so much of building it, um, the physical building, but you have to think of all of those, you should be thinking of all of the, those things when you're um, creating your proposal, how it's gonna be built, how much um, it's gonna cost to build, um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and I think being able to focus on that first before you even start thinking about how are we actually going to build it um, is really important. Thanks. You know how to contact me if you have more questions. So let me know. I hope you all apply. Well, if anyone does have any more questions, feel free um, to contact me. Again, my name is Amanda Camarada. You can find me on the AIAA Slack or just in the Minds directory. You can email me. Yeah, thanks for talking about L Space. <laughs>